Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I'm going to be talking about the H5N1 bird flu uh, outbreak that's in the United States. I'll also do another video uh, doing a, a cursory review of what's being published in the mainstream media. So in this video, uh, before I start with the dashboard from the CDC, I want to just remind the audience, please follow me on YouTube, Brayton, Rumble, and BitChute. The links are in the description of this video. Also, please follow me on X and Getter. All the links are in the, the description of this video. And if you would like to help support my work, you can donate on my website, the-studio-reykjavik.com, and you can donate at the bottom of the homepage. You can donate through Stripe, PayPal, and buy me a coffee. In addition, you can be a paid member on my Patreon channel. There are different tiers. The lowest tier is, is a support um, membership. The higher tiers, you get special access to some of my lectures on immunology and soon to be published um, I'm sorry, lectures on pulmono pulmonology and soon to be published immunology. Uh, you can also go to the store and sign up for the, the, the full class of pulmonology and immunology. You get, in the pulmonology, you get 22 PDFs and lectures for each PDF. You learn a lot about pulmonology for only $50. And the classes for, for immunology will start uh, June 3rd. And you have 16 lectures there with PDFs and videos that are accompanying the PDFs. So you learn a lot for only $50. So again, the pulmonology has already been posted in its completion and immunology will start on June 3rd. In addition, I have ebooks that people can purchase. I also have nano silver products, toothpaste, liquids, gels, soaps, lozenges, multivitamins, C60, which is a very strong antioxidant, Boomer products. I have D3, vitamin C, omega 3 ashwagandha root, good night formula, which will help you sleep and get into REM cycle, probiotic powder, resveratrol, B-complex vitamins, turmeric, mag magnesium and zinc, lignans, which will is a powder that helps to boost up your immune system. Very important. This is something that everyone should be taking daily. Collagen, digestive enzymes, and clarity factor. In addition, I have all natural deodorants and skincare bar and an anti-aging anti boxes, which are curated to help you um, improve your immune system and slow down the aging process. And it has a plethora of different products in each of the boxes. So you can take a look and you can pick, you know, like for example, in this case, you can pick which C60 you want and which deodorant you want. So, um, you know, can somewhat customize these boxes by, by um, you know, clicking what you would like to select here. But uh, these are very, very high quality supplements to help slow down the aging process and boost up your immune system. So with that said, I'd like to go and um, talk about the dashboard for this crisis with bird flu. We still have three cases total. Two of them are of this year. For the cases this year, one was in Texas, one was in Michigan. Both had exposure to dairy cows. Now what's new from the previous video I did yesterday um, is the, the wild, wild bird detection, all right? That number has gone up. All right, and we're now at 9,373. 
and let me just find out. Let me, I, I didn't write down what exactly was the uh, previous one. Let me look that up right here. So we can calculate how much it went up. Okay, the previous video I did, it was 9,352. And now it's 9,373. So there's an increase of, of birds detected, about 20 or so. And so that's, uh, but it's not a huge increase. So, you know, it's still you know, in the low side of, 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 you know, of worry. Don't, don't worry about this, but it did increase about 20. Uh, in terms of the poultry numbers, the outbreaks have stayed the same from the previous video from yesterday, 1,144. And there has been an increase in dairy cows affected. We have now it's still the same nine states, Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Kansas City, Idaho, South Dakota, Michigan, Ohio, and North Carolina. But Idaho, Texas, and Michigan are the new, the new cases. So again, you know, we have typically the cases were in Idaho and in Michigan. Some were from South Dakota and, and Colorado recently. But now it's Michigan and Texas and 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 Idaho. So um it is increasing. All right. So I want to just remind the audience that the this H5N1 doesn't transmit human to human. There is no case of human to human transmission. There is there are three cases since 2022 where individuals that are in contact to, with livestock can contract it. The two cases this year have been conjunctivitis. So, and they were both from dairy cows. Now, uh, the transmission with only 1,144 outbreaks within the poultry affected you know, within this section here. So there's there's 1,144 outbreaks. It's a little misleading because you don't really know how many birds are truly testing positive, but it's just saying that there, there's 1,144 outbreaks um, and it's not increasing quickly. And so the transmission from wild birds to poultry is somewhat muted. Now, how many wild birds really have it? And that might be problematic because of the way they are they're sampling the wild birds. All right. There, I'm sure there are a lot more birds out there than just the 9,373. All right. But the point here is, is that the transmission, even if this is a high number, the transmission to poultry is relatively low. And the transmission to dairy cows is is, is relatively low, either from wild birds to dairy cows or from poultry to dairy cows. So the point here is, is that the cows are increasing, um, but not at a very fast rate. And the transmission from wild birds to humans, the transmission from poultry to humans, and the transmission from dairy cows to humans is low. So this is, the, even though the news will probably project to worry or to, to you know, to be on guard, at this time, there is very low probability of it affecting humans. The problem comes in is, is that what will the government do in terms of, of exterminating poultry or the dairy cows? Most likely, it will not exterminate the cows. They may be exterminating the poultry. So that would mean that chicken, potentially even turkeys, would cost more because there's a lower supply. In addition, it's probably gonna affect the egg 
market. Now, when a cow is infected, they don't produce as much milk. Now they have found H5N1, this version of it, in, in milk, all right? But most milk that people drink are pa is pasteurized or ultra pasteurized. So you don't have to really worry about it because the, the H5N1 would be killed. Um, so, you know, the chances of getting it through, the point I'm making is the chances of getting it through milk or through eggs is extremely low. It's prudent though, not to drink at this time, it's prudent to, to, to not to drink raw milk or eat raw eggs. All right. If you just cook it, or if you're drinking pasteurized milk, you're fine. So I don't want anyone to be really, oh my God, you know, the world's ending kind of thing. It's not. This is low probability. That's the reason why I'm covering this. Now, that doesn't mean that something, and I covered this in the last video. It doesn't mean that a zoonosis event can't emerge and become more problematic and gain, and, and gain function, gain mutations just naturally. It can happen, but most likely this thing's going to die out. The, cur the, the worry that I have is that, is this stage one for a, a, a release in stage two that, that has the truncation of the NA protein and or um, more effective mutations in the replication complex, the four proteins for the replication complex that makes it more robust, higher transmission from wild birds to poultry or poultry to humans or dairy cows to humans. And that's my, my worry. Um, still low probability, but it is a possibility. All right. It's very, it's possible. I still think that this event is zoonosis, natural, but it is possible, but low probability that it was purposely uh, let out, all right? Low transmission um, only for something bigger to be released later. Or this could be a natural event and... Uh, people take an opportunity to release something that comes from a similar lineage. So it would be harder to um, prove that there was muta you know, uh, manipulation. It's possible to still find its manipulation if you can find the sequence for the recombination, either through CRISPR or through other digestive enzymes, but restrictive enzymes. But uh, my point here is, is that this is most likely a natural event that will die out. There's probably going to be an overreaction by the government in calling the, the herds of the cattle or, and or the poultry and disrupt the egg and the meat market. And so costs may go up. That's a, that's a problem. Um, low probability that this will emerge naturally into a bigger event that affects humans or more livestock to the degree where there's just mass die off, um, you know, because of the infection. I think that's low probability. I think there it's also low probability that it's a release and that there is a phase two of the release down the road this year, I think that's low probability also, but possible. So just, just, just with that in mind, just, you know, just keep that in the back of your, you know, in, into the back of your head and just, you know, follow along and watch, watch as, as this emerges. My gut feeling is, is that this thing's going to die out. Um, but there's going to be a push for inoculations in the fall. 
So, you know, be aware of that. That's the reason why I'm, you know, covering this just to inform the public on my perspective on this. I think it's rational what I'm saying. It's dealing with probabilities and it's also dealing with possibilities. Um, there is no reason to worry as of yet. Um, but I do think that you boosting up your immune system and following the health protocols that I've been saying uh, will be beneficial for your body independent on if something happens with this outbreak. So, you know, just go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and, you know, uh, follow what I've been saying. Structural nano silver, like Max 35, take a teaspoon of it a day. Turmeric and ashwagandha will help to bring down the inflammation. The structural nano silver will neutralize pathogens. It's a C60. That's going to be a strong antioxidant for you to soak up those free radicals and to boost up your mitochondria so you have ATP. The digestive enzymes will, will not only help with digesting proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates, but it'll also there's also uh, a, a proteinolytic compound in there that will be beneficial. And it, it also has a, uh, a fibrinolytic capability. So get the digestive enzyme complex that I have. In addition, get D3, which helps to um, get cells into apoptosis if infected. And it helps with gene expression for proper gene expression. Lignans will help to boost up your immune system. It's a powder. And omega-3 will help with your lipid profile and prevent or try to prevent the uh, stickiness of the red blood cells. So it slows down the potentiality of a blood clot. So you follow this protocol that I have and you are going to um, boost up your immune system, get more energy, and slow down the aging process. So that's uh, a, a great way to move your body into health and, you know, weather any sort of problems that may arise. In addition, you got to approach this holistically. It's not just about proper supplementation. It's about eating properly. Stay away from GMO foods. Stay away from, from um, you know, fast food and stuff like that. So proper proper diet, filter your water. I use a zero water, uh, five, five level for filtration. So filter water, get the, the fluoride out, do some exercises, but low intensity. Don't get crazy with, you know, running marathons and doing triathlons for the next five years. Got to let your heart heal. And what you should do is do a lot of walking. You know, the more walking, the better. So do walking. Um, you can do a little bit of jogging, but don't get crazy with it. Do a little bit of cycling. Don't get crazy with it. You can do some stairs. Don't get crazy with it, right? Do a little bit of resistant, you know, um, weight training. Don't get crazy with it, all right? Do some balancing exercises, some stretching, and train your mind by reading and writing. And being positive and, and, and get, you know, maybe meditate or get into spirit, some sort of level of spirituality, uh, you know, through prayer or meditation when you in, in proper sleep. When you do all these things holistically, your body is going to heal and you're going to you're going to start feeling younger. All right. Especially with the stretching. All right. You're kind of activating your body to kind of like learn how to balance itself again. And, you know, you're, you're activating these muscles in, in a way that you as an adult don't normally do, but you did regularly when you were a kid. So, so, you know, and plus it'll give you more flexibility. It will, you know, it, you'll, you'll be, uh, you'll be able to get out of a chair or, you know, get out, you know, get out of your car easier and not pull muscle. And it just overall, your quality of life will improve if you if you follow this holistic method.
You know, it's not a silver bullet for, you know, for everything. But the thing is, is that it is in your power to boost up your immune system, get healthy through a holistic approach. So just follow this holistic approach and you're going to be doing much better. So please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and get the products that I offer, especially the supplements and the, the lecture series that I, that I have published. And, uh, you know, it help improve your, your health and your state of mind. So go to the store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. Thank you for listening. Please share the links with your social media group. If you can, please help support my work by donating or purchasing the products that I offer. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.